Distribute Championships of North America here in Las Vegas. Yeah! I'm your host, Tony Hightower. Let's meet our experts. I'm a director of technology, but I'm an expert in the band Bomb Heads. I'm a movie theater supervisor, but I'm an expert in the West Wing. I'm a video editor, but I'm an expert in mixology. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Welcome, experts. Our game is played in four rounds. In round one, you'll answer ten questions apiece. We'll start with Dave, our Talking Heads expert. Dave, how did you get into the Talking Heads? Well, I, I started getting into classic rock in a real big way back in college about ten years ago. I started noticing I really liked a lot of their songs, and I just went from there. That's awesome. I love that band, too. You, you know. All right, let's get started. Let's see how much you know about them. Number one. At what school did David Byrne, Chris France, and Tina, Tina Wayman meet? The Rhode Island School of Design. That's right. Number two. What member of the band was born outside the United States? David Byrne. He was born in Scotland. Number three. What label signed Talking Heads in 1977? Sire. Sire is right. Number four. Who directed the 1984 concert film Stop Making Sense? Jonathan Demme. Yes. Number five. What is the title of Talking Heads' second album? More songs about buildings and food. Correct. Number six. What influential band did Jerry Harrison belong to before joining the Talking Heads? Modern Lovers. Yes. <laughs> Number seven. What was Talking Heads' last studio album released in 1988? That would be Naked. That would be Naked. <laughs> Yay. Number eight. What British producer collaborated with the band beginning with their second album? Brian Nino. The great Brian Nino. Number nine. What was the biggest hit single for the offshoot band Tom Tom Club? Genius of Love. Yes. And number 10, in the song Life During Wartime, what two real life menus follow This Ain't No? This Ain't No uh, Mud Club and This Ain't No Seated Genies. You went 10 for 10. <laughs> well done. <laughs> All right, Liz. So tell us, like, how long have you been watching The West Wing? I started watching it when it came on the air when I was 12. I watched the entire series straight through, got the DVDs. And wrote my senior thesis on it in college. Nice. Whoa. Wow. I was like, well, okay, I was a fan, I was a fan. Okay. Senior thesis in college? I was doing the ideal presidency. <laughs> that is awesome. I want to read that someday. <laughs> Maybe soon. But first, let's see how much you know about the West Wing. Let's go with number one. Who created the West Wing? Aaron Sorkin. Number two, that's correct. Number two, what two jobs does C.J. Craig hold over the course of the series? Press secretary and chief of staff. That's right. Number three, who plays the president who is sworn in on the series finale? Jimmy Smith. That's right. Number four, what event was the special episode Isaac and Ishmael written in response to? September 11th. That's right. Number five, what style of camera work popularized by the West Wing follows characters talking as they move throughout a building? Walk and talk. Yes. Number six, what actor's death was written into the show's final season, saying he died of a heart attack on election night? John Spencer. That's right. Number seven, what disease does President Bartlett tell the country he suffers from in the season two finale? Multiple sclerosis. Correct. Number eight, what magic trick do Penn and Teller perform at Zoe's birthday party that results in a publicity nightmare for the White House? They burn, or maybe burn a flag in the White House. That's right. They appear to burn a flag. Number nine, what was the name of the first lady played by Stockard Channing? Abigail Barrington Bartlett. <laughs> Abby would have been fine. <laughs> and number ten, what happens to President Bartlett in the final moments of the season one finale? He's shot. He is shot. You're dead for ten, too. No pressure. So, yes, so Sam, uh, you are our mixology expert. Tell us about mixology. I just like to drink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, I decided I wanted to learn more about this and uh, branch out from the normal offerings and uh, want to learn as much about it as possible. And, yeah. Well, what are you drinking right now? I've got a gin and tonic. Aces. Simple but classic. <laughs> so let's see how much you know about mixology, Sam. All right. Here we go. Number one, what berry is gin? It's distinctive taste. Yeah, Juniper. Juniper's right. Number two, what liqueur was salesman George Bednar promoting when he popularized the Harvey Wallbanger? Galliano. Galliano. Number three, what color is the cover of Old Mr. Boston Bartender's Guide, also known as the Bible of Booze? Red. Red is correct. Number four, what drink is made by serving a greyhound in a glass with a salted rim? It's a, it's a, it's a salty dog. 
Number five, what animal appears in a red circle on bottles of Bacardi? A bat. A bat. Number six, what, it, what name of a hot mulled punch is derived from the old English word be ye healthy? Wassel. Wassel is right. Number seven, what proof is Smirnoff's vodka? 80. 80. And number, and number eight, in Casino Royale, what brand of gin does James Bond call for when telling the bartender how to make a Vesper? Gordon's. Gordon's is right. Number nine, what is a fifth? A fifth of? A gallon. A gallon. Number 10, what French cognac brand's popularity soared after it was in the title of a 2002 Busta Rhymes song? Cobassier. Cobassier. Nine out of 10. It's telling, but nine out of 10 is last place. <laughs> All right, it's time for round two. Right after this, click here to view round two.